So, you've been playing a lot of Killer Queen Arcade and wanted to learn some about some of the core differences and similarities with Black, see if you're interested in it. So the game in itself is still very similar to KQA. You've got three ways to win. Military, Economic, Snail. Uh, those ways are a little bit different in the long scheme of things. Uh, you still have, uh, if you run the snail to the flag post, you'll win. Uh, the way snails run is a little bit different. Like you, as you can see, you can push it off the platform. But if you have to push it, uh, if you get it past the platform, then you might have to run it through the grass. The grass does make you slower. Grass does not exist in KQA, so a lot of the time it can be an effective strategy to maybe push the snail past your ledge just to make it, to make it so that if the other team is trying to run snail, that it's slowed down for them. Uh, with economic victory, you can run it in like normal. This is good old way KQA does it. But you can also throw berries. So, for example, you can just toss it up and then get it in instantly. You don't have to go through the, the process of jumping in and out of the berry hole. So it uh, ends up being very efficient as uh, in KQB to end up learning berry throws. And as you can kind of see, it's based on the power. The power of the berry throw is dependent on when you release. So you can really learn a lot of setups for, uh, for throwing berries. And then if you can get them into the holes, uh, you're going to greatly increase economic victories and that's one main difference in KQB as well compared to KQA. Economic victories are way more prevalent. Military is probably just as important in uh, KQA and KQB. Very important to have just in general to help support the queen. But uh, berries are definitely greatly improved in, in KQB compared to KQA. Uh, with the queen lives nothing's really changed there. Uh, the main difference I would say for military is that on in KQB, uh, the queen is never perfectly safe. There, like in KQA, you can just hug the ceiling. You could be uh, be hugging, like for example, right here, and you couldn't really ever die because you're just hugging your backs to the ceiling, and uh, there's no way they uh, no warrior can really challenge you. But if you're just a queen floating in the airspace here, any warrior that has height on you will kill you. So it doesn't really matter how high or low you are, as long as this, your dash, ends up attacking them where their hitbox is. That's definitely the biggest uh, change for KQA to KQB is how different the warriors are. So here you've got the, the sword. Uh, he, he's super effective. He's got this dash that helps him be very mobile around the map. As I was previously mentioning, there's no height difference in this game, so height and sticking to a ceiling doesn't really matter. Uh, there is, if you just spam the button, you'll just automatically stick to ceilings. That's just how the physics work. Uh, if you do a similar like three-tap stick, like about here, you start stop letting go. If you stop spamming, you'll actually do a bounce. That's a little bit tougher to get, but with some practice, that can be very effective. The other differences are with, with the two other weapons in the game. So as you can see here, you've got the mace and you've got the gun. So they, unless you get speed along with the mace or with the gun, you're just going to be at this normal pace. And then your attack button, even with the, the warrior dashes, with the mace it just gives you the spinning ball for about four seconds or so. And then has a cooldown. As you see, it turn flashes white. It's at the end of its cooldown, and then the mace is vulnerable after that point. There's a point where the mace can't restart up its animation. If you get speed before you get the mace, you can actually lower that cooldown to about by 50%. So that's very effective to get speed, then grab the mace. I'll actually talk about the other two upgrades in the meantime here as well. So as you can see, there's two uh, options at every gate so you do not there's no singular gate as like as there is in KQA like you can only get, get warrior speed in KQA here you could choose well I'm at this gate do I want the shield or do I want the sword uh, so the shield gives you a little bumper that will push other drones around it and uh, will give you one protection if uh, somebody dashes into that shield or hits your shield it'll give you an extra life and it'll respawn after about three seconds you can stack sh speed and shield with other weapons so you can go get speed shield sword mace or gun I'm just gonna show the effectiveness of the gun so as you can see it's a very long-range shot 
that goes about almost the full way across the map. Uh, with speed, it gives you some extra mobility. Uh, shield for some extra defense. That's just a quick demonstration of all the, the weapons in uh, KQB compared to KQA. One other key difference for uh, KQA and KQB is the map choices. So whenever you go into a custom, you can see that there's six maps available. They're all different. I can show you the the clean maps right here, just to show you that all six of them. Pod, Black Queen's Keep, Helix Temple, Tally Field, Spire, and Split Juniper. Uh, and the last thing I'm going to show is Queen. Just show the differences in how uh, the Queen moves. Uh, one of the main things is that they also still have that dash, just like uh, the Warrior does. Uh, and as I was previously mentioning, there's no height advantage in this game, so anywhere that the queen sits could be a vulnerable spot. But they do threaten the spaces around them with dashes, so they control some space. It's just not as like perfect or not as a certain space compared to KQA. But yeah, as you can see, you can cancel out your dive into a dash with the move with the queen, so your movement can be very fluid in this game. That's one of the main things that's very different. With KQA, the maps are so big that the Queen doesn't really have much mobility, but they're very strong wherever they're at. In this game, the Queen can really be everywhere, but they're not quite as strong as KQA. They can always be threatened out of their position, but they can do some really crazy mobility things like this. And for newer Queens, that becomes really difficult if you're outmatched. When you're first starting this game and you don't have movement down and you can't do this it's very difficult to really keep up you might just get overwhelmed which is certainly possible it's it's tricky to to get a hang of this but once you master it i'm sure uh queen won't be a problem for you and then you can be a uh, an effective uh player around the map all right and uh that's gonna be it for me uh this is yeesh signing off I'll come to you soon with some more KQB content. Uh, thanks for watching.